Be vegan. Make peace. Our programs offer many languages. Please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule. Nos programs offer plusieurs langues. Veuillez visiter suprememastertv.com bar oblique schedule. Nuestros programas ofrecen varios idiomas. Visite suprememastertv.com barra inclinada y schedule. Ta programa damas prosferon de sepoles glosses. Para calum edite suprememastertv.com cathedral schedule. All 1.5 billion cows in the world, you created them. They don't want to be killed, but you kill them to eat. In the process, you kill not just them, you kill the planet. Now, what can we do? The cost of reducing carbon dioxide are much larger because it needs technology. The cost of reducing methane is zero. Simply stop eating meat. Please stay with us to find out more. Today's program will be presented in English with subtitles in Arabic, Oluxis, also known as Vietnamese, Chinese, Dutch, English, French, German, Hindi, Hungarian, Indonesian, Italian, Japanese, Korean, Mongolian, Persian, Polish, Portuguese, Punjabi, Romanian, Russian, Spanish, Thai, Turkish, and Urdu. Talofa means hello in the Tuvaluan language. I am Alani. The generous people of Tuvalu appreciate your prayers for kindness. Among all beings, in the benevolence of heaven, may humankind share only love with our precious co-inhabitants. Tuvalu is an archipelago of nine tiny islands located just south of the equator in the South Pacific Ocean. It is one of the smallest and most remote nations in the world with one airport on the island of Funa Futi, its capital. This wondrously beautiful region offers a peaceful environment that is ideal for the rest and relaxation of visitors and locals alike. Tuvalu is one of the few countries in the world whose landscape is comprised entirely of coral atolls, which are island reef areas that often encircle protected saltwater lagoons. This creates a spectacular marine environment for the region's 317 colorful fish species, as well as dolphins and majestic whales. The culture of Tuvalu is unique, with an emphasis on friendliness and a lifestyle of being close to nature. Each island has its own assembly of elders whose goal is to maintain a peaceful order within the community. Tuvaluans enjoy traditional music and dancing, often performed in celebratory dress made from the pandanus plant. The fatile dance is often the highlight of local events that take place in traditional community structures such as the one in Funa Futi's Hand of Friendship Meeting Hall. On November 8, 2009, a climate change conference was held in the US capital of Washington, DC to bring attention to the quickest and most effective solution to global warming, the organic vegan diet. Titled, Humanity's Leap to the Golden Era, Washington DC Climate Change Conference. The event brought together experts of science and health, as well as international ambassadors, media members, and artists. In addition, engaging video messages on the need to address global meat consumption were contributed by esteemed figures, including former Indian Environment Minister Menaka Gandhi, former European Parliament member Jens Holm and leading American nutrition scientist 
Dr. T. Colin Campbell, the highlight of the afternoon was an informative question and answer session via conference with the guest of honor, Supreme Master Ching Hai, who had graciously set aside her busy schedule to discuss ways that humankind could transition toward a brighter era. We now invite you to join us for part three of the rebroadcast of the live conference with Supreme Master Ching Hai titled Humanity's Leap to the Golden Era, Washington DC Climate Change Conference on November 8th, 2009 in Washington DC, USA. Mr. Jin's home of Sweden, former member of the European Parliament, is another climate change expert. He has sent us his greeting and a message via video. Let's hear from him now. My name is Jens Holm. I was a member of the European Parliament between 2006 and 2009. I'd like to uh, greet all the participants of this uh, very important uh, climate uh, conference. Here in Sweden and in Europe, we are uh, getting prepared for uh, the big climate summit in uh, Copenhagen, Denmark. So it's very uh, handy that you organize a conference about climate change so you in the US also can get uh, prepared for uh, action for the climate. Because we all know that uh, the situation is very, very crucial. It's not only a matter of uh, putting pressure on the politicians, it's also a matter on what uh, you and I can do. And uh, I think there is a lot we can do. We all know about uh, driving less car, uh, stop flying with the uh, airplanes, taking the train uh, instead, uh, and so on. But uh, I think also we can change the climate by stop eating meat. The meat production is actually responsible for more than all the uh, emissions together from the world's entire transport sector. That means that meat production uh, emits more gases than uh, the cars, than the trucks, than the airplanes and the boats together. So by stopping eating meat, you can save the planet and you can save the climate. So please, Become a part of the solution. Stop eating meat. My vision is that uh, by 2012, uh, all countries in the world have adopted uh, ambitious targets for cutting the emissions of uh, climate gases. And that all of us were not any longer a part of the problem, we're part of the solution. Thank you, Mr. Dens Holm. Mm -hmm. The effects of climate change are certainly being felt in the United States. In 2005, Hurricane Katrina smashed through New Orleans, leaving over 80% of the city flooded. Last year, Governor Arnold Schwarzenegger proclaimed a statewide drought in California, and temperatures are still on the rise. According to the U.S. National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, or NOAA, the combined global land and ocean surface temperature in September was the second warmest on record. Climate change is having devastating effects on other nations. Our next address is from Mrs. Maneka Gandhi, the former Minister of Environment and Forest for India. She has been a member of the Indian Parliament continuously since 1989. Mrs. Gandhi has received many awards for her environmental work, including the prestigious ASG Jayakar Award for creating awareness about climate change, animal welfare, and deforestation. Please listen to Mrs. Maneka Gandhi. I would like to say my namaskar to Supreme Master Ching Hai and to all of you in the audience. I wish I could have been with you today but unfortunately I have parliament. For many years now, we have been experiencing the problems of climate change. In my own constituency, there was a terrible drought this year. And just when the government had come to grips with it, it turned into an unseasonal flood. The farmers lost everything. The lentils I eat, regarded as a staple in India, 
are now so expensive that they have become a luxury. But we have no rain, no water, increasing heat, drying rivers, and dying people. Do you feel powerless as an individual to stop the world from dying? Let me explain how you and I can turn this around immediately. Methane and carbon dioxide are greenhouse gases, which means that their presence in the air traps heat and affects the Earth's temperature and climate, making the planet warmer. As it warms, the climate changes and the glaciers melt. When the glaciers melt, the rivers first flood and then dry up. Let's take methane. It's an easy problem to deal with. It's produced from four sources. Livestock, livestock manure, rice farming, coal mine, and landfills. The time has come for both the developed and developing world to recognize that reducing methane is the quickest way to stop global warming while we wrestle with the problems of technology changes for reducing carbon dioxide. What makes methane so lethal? It may be less than carbon dioxide, but it is 23 times more efficient in trapping heat in the atmosphere than carbon dioxide. And methane has a large effect for a brief period. In fact, it lasts in the air for a net lifetime of about 8.4 years, whereas carbon dioxide has a small effect for a long period. What does that mean? It means that if we stop generating methane today, we will see the effect almost immediately. In developed countries, the eating of meat has risen from 65 kilos to 100 kilos per year. 100 kilos means over 300 animals are killed by one person every year. Meat eating, why is it a problem? Because it increases both carbon dioxide and methane. Producing one steak in your supermarket takes roughly 60,000 calories of energy. Keeping cattle or pigs, growing food for them, feeding them, transporting them, killing them, Cleaning and packaging the meat, sending it by air-conditioned vehicles to the supermarkets, which keep it in freezers, then you buy it, then it's fridges at home, and then you cook it because you can't eat it raw. This is all carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide, we increase because forests are cut by the minute in places like Brazil, China, Indonesia, India, so that we can graze the cattle, the pigs, the hens, the goats, the sheep. These forests absorb carbon dioxide. So when we cut down the forest, we cut down the carbon sinks and we exchange them for meat. Now come to methane and its relationship to meat. Livestock produce 23% of all methane because of the fermentation in their intestines, which produces gas in these animals. It produces it in their manure, in the wastewater that they produce. A single dairy cow produces between 550 to 700 liters of methane a day. The world's top destroyer of the atmosphere is not the car, nor the factory. It is the meat-eating human being. There is a 400-page United Nations report which has identified the world's rapidly growing herds of cattle as the greatest threat to the climate, forests, wildlife, and the continuation of the earth. Your ham sandwich is killing me. Your ham sandwich is killing the earth. Livestock produce more than 100 other polluting gases, including two thirds of the world's emissions of ammonia. Ammonia creates acid rain. Acid rain destroys forests. And overgrazing has turned pastures and mountain ranges like my Aravali range, which used to protect Delhi and no longer does because it's become a desert. Cows soak up vast amounts of water. It takes a staggering 990 liters of water to produce one liter of milk. Wastes from feedlots and fertilizers used to grow their feet all washes down to the sea. It kills the coral reefs and it creates dead zones. There are over 200 dead zones in the ocean now, thousands of kilometers wide, including near India including off Washington, which have no life. Diet change would make far more of a difference than trading in, for instance, your car. Many people think that if they trade in a standard 
car, for a more efficient hybrid car, this will save the earth. But it doesn't. It reduces annual greenhouse emissions by just one ton a year. And then you create one and a half tons by eating meat. All 1.5 billion cows in the world, you created them. They don't want to be killed, but you kill them to eat. In the process, you kill not just them, you kill the planet. Now, what can we do? The cost of reducing carbon dioxide are much larger because it needs technology. The cost of reducing methane is zero. Simply stop eating meat. You can remove methane in one day, starting with today's dinner. If you stop eating meat today, you will stop my Ganges glacier from melting. And 23% of my people will survive because the magnificent and holy Ganges will stop turning into a stream. And how will this impact you? My people will not become refugees and storm your gates to enter your country. So not only will you save the world yourself, stopping eating will also stop so much poverty on the planet. It brings you better health. It eliminates most cancers. It frees up masses of land for vegetables and grains and really good eating. It allows water for the poor. For instance, do you know that one slaughterhouse in my city uses 16 million liters a day and one family gets one liter? Take the power into your own hands. You can become an earth saver. You don't need machines. You don't need governments. You don't even need treaties like the Copenhagen Treaty. You can stop it today by yourself. Maybe this is the ultimate lesson that nature is trying to teach us. Good gets good. Don't kill and don't be killed. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Gandhi. Your desire to protect all life is an inspiration to all. We wish you much success in your noble political service. Oh yes, and I want to tell the audience here that the complete unedited version of Mrs. Gandhi's address is on DVD in the gift bag you'll receive as you leave this event. And now, for a dramatic change of pace. According to Time magazine, Albert Einstein was the quintessential genius of the 20th century. Often, when Einstein was faced with a problem, he would pick up his violin and play until a solution entered his consciousness. Music was the source of his inspiration. Our next performer is definitely a source of inspiration. Ms. Ji Young Kim graduated from Young Tsai University and has performed extensively in Korea. She plays the electric violin, often creating upbeat versions of classical compositions. This afternoon, she will share her lively rendition of Pachelbel's Canon in D major. Please give a warm welcome to Ms. Ji Young Kim.
Thank you very much, Ms. Ji Yoon Kim, for uplifting our spirits and sharing your heartfelt enthusiasm for music. Yes, that was truly inspiring. I have attended many national and international conventions, workshops on uh, topics ranging from uh, conflict and peace mm -hmm. to environment, ecology, indigenous peoples, mm -hmm. human rights and so on. But I thought this was a unique experience for me. And I myself learned a lot from this. I was getting stuff that was educating me and really hitting me hard, pro provoking my mind. I'm 57 years old and a few health issues. And what I've been hearing is this could save my life. And they're talking about the climate, and it was just getting too overbearing, the vastness of the information, that I just, I put my pad away, and I just started listening. And I said, well, look, I hope they got a video or a website, I'll pick up on it. I'm calling it a spiritual awakening for the world, because I do want the universe to go on as it has been going on. It can't go on like it is right now, because everything is suffering now. The climate affects everything. Today is a reawakening because the tofu I enjoyed today, I thought it was steak, but it was so delicious. I have to learn the menu. It's a whole new language now. This is a whole new culture here. It's not about race. It's a whole new spirituality. Um, and I'm just so privileged that God has put me in an environment that he has opened up my eyes to a wider horizon and I'm just grateful. Uh, my name is, uh, well, hello, thank you for inviting me to the conference. I think this is a very important step uh, towards a, a solution to the problem that we have uh, for uh, global warming that is related also to the production of food uh, in this country, in the United States, but mainly we are exporting also uh, the problems that uh, are associated with the production, uh, mass production of uh, what is called food, but uh, I call it edible goods. And uh, it is so close to the work that I do. Uh, I am uh, the director of a Latino center in uh, Columbia, Missouri, and we uh, help Latino families to navigate the health, education, and legal system of the, the state and the, the United States because we receive calls from different states. So people ask me, and why it has to be vegan? Well, because uh, for 30 years, the population of this country has been consuming those uh, edible goods mm -hmm. uh, and uh, nothing good is coming out from it. So it is a drastic uh, situation. It's, it is something that has to be changed in a, in a very drastic way. So I want to be one of the tools out there that will help do that. That's wonderful. Well, thank you and uh, thank you, Master Ching Hai, for uh, bringing so much enthusiasm for thousands of people uh, that uh, you know, they decide to do something that uh, really, actually we decide to do something that is a little bit uh, um, beyond our ego and beyond our satisfaction because we are doing something good. Uh, my goal is to try to stop uh, the madness of uh, obesity uh, and try to help people control their diabetes and their cardiovascular disease. I do research, I look for different uh, physicians that are doing the same kind of work and I enjoy very much SMTV because of all the, the information that we get there and the links mainly, you know. It's not just uh, to listen to, to some videos of somebody talking about meditation and peace in the world, but the links, but uh, the people that we can refer to, the contacts that we can make, uh, scientists uh, that are being interviewed. And uh, that, for me, is an eye-opener to the world. All information concerning the scientific evidence of climate change and its solution is in Supreme Master Ching Hai's book, From Crisis to Peace. Free for download at crisistopeace.org. Kind viewers, we appreciate your presence today on Words of Wisdom. Please join us tomorrow for part four of this conference with Supreme Master Ching Hai. Coming up next is the peaceful Yazidi people of the Middle East. Right after Noteworthy News, may your heart be uplifted by the radiance of the sun 
that is imbued with the love of heaven. Our programs offer many languages. Please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule and suprememastertv.com forward slash WOW. Be vegan. Repentant. Save your soul.